Hello, welcome to the stream. I'm Christopher and this is Challenger Tabletop and I'm a little bit less ready than usual today. Still getting everything set up. But welcome to the channel. We're going to be continuing Orc Week here by painting a proxy mech gun. And this is going to be a model that I got uh, pretty cheap on Amazon and it's kind of like one of those classic uh, toy soldier models like the uh, green army men you're used to and I'm actually going to be using a German 88 artillery gun as a Warhammer 40k orc mech gun and let's see if I can get that on camera for you well, I guess here we have a still picture of it as it came in the box or in the package. Uh, just came two of them in a plastic bag. I think they were under $15, so a good deal compared to a Warhammer 40k mech gun kit. And I thought the quality was pretty decent. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, video of it here. So here you can see two of them, one painted, one unpainted, and uh, I'm, I play Goffs and they have black and checkerboard as some of their visual themes. So here's the one I'm going to be painting today, it's primed black, and here's the one I've already painted, so we're going to be going for something kind of like this. I'll go ahead and give it a little zoom in, and you guys can see I painted some kind of uh, red ruby lenses on there. Pretty happy with how that first one came out. Gonna try and do the same thing in a couple hours tonight and see how it goes. I did make myself some coffee. I think that's ready to get. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this for you guys to watch while I go uh, grab my coffee. I'll be back in about one minute. I am back and I think we're just about ready to get painting uh, now that I think about it I do have dirty paint water let me swap that out real quick okay well a uh, pretty rocky start but I think I'm ready to paint now French press coffee will be ready in about a couple minutes. Unrolling my uh, brush holder, which I use as a paint palette here, and getting out my classic brushes I use. Uh, I think we'll start with just these. Okay, let's get painting, shall we? I was going to start by giving this kind of a scratched up look uh, with uh, silver, kind of like you see here. I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside for now. And for a topic uh, for the show today, I was thinking about talking about streaming on Twitch, how to do it, how to set up uh, OBS Studio, and um, the other aspects of running a channel like this. Now that I've, I'm starting to get it figured out, of course, I'm still learning every time I do this, so I'm not a total expert yet, but at least I seem to have gotten a lot of the basics figured out. And I'm happy to share what I do know so far. A lot of people are interested in getting started in streaming or sharing their hobby. And myself, what I'm working on right now is uh, getting ready to stream Warhammer 40k games. And I've started setting up uh, test camera setups for that. 
So let's go ahead and switch to more of a top-down view so the camera's not so in my way here. As you can probably see, I use a cell phone for my top-down camera, and it runs a program called DroidCam OBS, which lets me uh, stream live video to my computer, where it gets fed into the uh, OBS Studio, which is a streaming program that then outputs a video stream to twitch.tv, the website where people can watch. All right, I got my French press uh, ready, gonna have a sip of coffee. I, one nice thing, I can drink as much coffee as I want because I'm gonna be working overnight tonight after this. And it's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Hope you're having a good one. Hope you're having, doing something fun. Even if it's just uh, hobby painting or watching some Twitch. After thinking about it, I'm actually gonna go to a larger brush to start with the silver. I'm gonna use my uh, Princeton Art Round. I think it's number eight. Uh, hard to see because all my brushes are covered in paint <laughs> and stuff gets worn off over time. Well, I succumbed to more hobby purchases. I went ahead and ordered some uh, eradicators for my Dark Angels. I couldn't resist <laughs> seeing all the uh, rules surrounding um, Crusher Stampede for Tyranids and the uh, Railgun for Tau. I thought I should probably get some eradicators while they're still somewhat affordable. So managed to pick up a few for about 30 bucks for three, which is better than the 55, they run new. And I'm just gonna start, I think, by blocking in the sort of silver on the barrel here. Might take a couple coats. So let's get the first one on there. And my silver's covering pretty well. We're using, um, is it Runefang? No, Iron Hand Steel here, base paint. So streaming, and this could apply to streaming uh, hobby painting, streaming uh, games of Warhammer or board games or Dungeons and Dragons or whatever it is that you might want to stream. And I am uh, streaming this on Twitch and after the stream completes, I'm able to upload the videos directly from Twitch to YouTube. So some of you may be watching this after the fact on YouTube, on our Challenger Tabletop uh, YouTube channel. But uh, Twitch is not the only place to stream live video anymore. It's getting uh, really stiff competition from YouTube as a place to live stream. And also somewhat surprisingly now, Facebook. Uh, Facebook gaming, Facebook live streaming uh, has become more of a thing. So let's see, I do wanna have my other one available to look at. I'm trying to make these two guns somewhat match. So trying to get silver in the same spots on both of them. So should you stream on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook Live? That's a big question that is uh, a lot of people are pondering right now, especially streamers who have been uh, in the game for a while. Many of them are switching from Twitch to YouTube. And as for which one you should pick, I would say that's constantly changing as the different uh, platforms evolve. So you're probably best off asking that question to the YouTube search algorithm and getting some opinions from people who specialize in this kind of thing. Uh, some of the ones I've looked at, um, gotten opinions from on YouTube are like uh, Harris Heller uh, does a lot of content about streaming and so does Devin Nash. They seem like two of the guys who are probably most knowledgeable about these things. Gonna go ahead and detach the top of the gun here to paint this area. 
So check out Devin Nash and Harris Heller on YouTube. I'm subscribed to both of their channels and I find their content is very informative and interesting. And definitely take their uh, opinion seriously as for which is the better platform to stream on. Now I'm in, gonna go ahead and start just roughing in some silver kind of uh, like edge highlights basically. And we're doing these pretty rough, like not, not worrying too much about uh, getting it nice and crisp because basically I just want it to look like this gun is really beat up and scratched up and for the most part that's what we're trying to do here uh, with this step. But uh, I did choose to stream on Twitch because it seemed like the easiest way to get started. Twitch is all about streaming and so they are fairly welcoming for new people uh, as far as getting your first stream online and kind of figuring the whole thing out. So I've had a good experience on Twitch so far, and I would say that in the Warhammer community on Twitch, uh, I found everybody to be quite supportive and quite nice. So it has felt like a very welcoming place to start streaming. And so far I don't regret streaming on Twitch. Uh, it seems like it was a good choice for me. And at least I always have the option of moving to another platform at some point in the future. Uh, just a heads up that once you do start having some success on Twitch, you may get offered the opportunity to become like a Twitch affiliate, which is basically like one of their, mm, kind of hard to describe it, like, uh, like a verified streamer kind of thing. And I've heard it's not necessarily a great deal in that you're, you have to commit to streaming a whole lot and you're not allowed to necessarily share your videos everywhere you want right away but I think you just have to wait maybe 24 hours before uploading your completed streams to YouTube so it's not like they totally handcuff you in terms of sharing your uh, content elsewhere but um, th those are not the only uh, restrictions I think that you have to operate under so I don't know if it's necessarily a great idea to aim to become a Twitch affiliate, but it is a service they offer once you start to become uh, well known on the service, I guess. And I've also seen that in order to start receiving like uh, donations on Twitch, you do have to complete some basic requirements that include a certain amount of average viewers, certain amount of hours streamed in the last 30 days and um, that kind of thing. So I chose to start on Twitch and I've been uploading my videos to YouTube afterwards. And the program I'm using to broadcast to Twitch is Streamlab, or I'm sorry, is uh, OBS Studio. Uh, OBS Studio is a free software that you can download where you basically have your camera feeds going into the app application and then inside of OBS Studio you can arrange multiple cameras one on top of another like you see my base camera here is superimposed on the video coming from my cell phone showing the miniature. Uh, that's all set up in Streamlabs. I also put the uh, I guess over there I have a logo up in the corner of the screen and I have an area that's black on the side of the uh, screen for chat to appear. All of that is totally customizable inside uh, OBS Studio. Streamlabs OBS is a program created by Streamlabs, a different company that imports all your settings from OBS Studio and then basically replaces it. It's uh, a competitor to OBS Studio and that's why they kind of use the the name OBS in their Streamlabs OBS app and it seems like kind of uh, like a little bit of a more streamlined maybe a little more user-friendly a little slicker version of OBS Studio, 
but at the same time maybe um, well I guess it's proprietary to their company and the reason I haven't really been that attracted to it is because it seems like OBS Studio can basically do what I need and so I like to stick to the sort of um, open source uh, application if I can. Basically, I'm just not sure I really want to support Streamlabs, but I don't know, that could change. Uh, I do use some Streamlabs features. Uh, besides having OBS, uh, Streamlabs OBS application, they also provide a lot of features that you can use in uh, OBS Studio. So let's see, I am using some features from Streamlabs, which are the chat box over on the side of the screen where chat can appear. And right above my head, you see a stream label from, I think from Streamlabs, yeah, which is showing my most recent uh, follower. And I just realized I don't have that application running, I should. So in addition to running um, OBS Studio, I also have to run the Streamlabs stream labels application in order to have these uh, names appear on screen. So if you see Mitzi has followed, welcome. Thank you for following uh, last uh, live stream, Mitzi. Um, those are able to appear thanks to the Streamlabs stream label app. So two applications I have to be running are OBS Studio and the Streamlabs stream labels. And then there is one more application I'm running on my phone. And that one is also free and it's called DroidCam OBS. So DroidCam is a application that turns your phone camera into a webcam and basically live streams that video feed to an application on your computer. And DroidCam OBS is the version of that that's made to work with um, OBS Studio. All right, let's keep on with the metal brushwork here. Metal edge highlights. Maybe we'll put some circles so it looks like this turret's been turning in this spot, scratching the paint. Basically just dry brushing here. And I will come along and add a, a black ink wash so that'll somewhat darken up these blacks and it'll back off the brightness of the silver a little bit in some areas, especially the sort of flat areas. And here and there, I'm also just adding some little sort of dots of silver to make it look like something has chipped or scratched the paint. I don't know, maybe somebody set a, a grot set a bucket or something down on the leg of this thing and chipped the paint or a vehicle ran over it. Or it was just, it has like a toe, dr toe what is that, a tow hook or something here? Maybe it's been getting dragged and bumping into things. Sort of scratch and scuff the paint. So those are the three applications I'm running. OBS Studio, uh, or you could use Streamlabs OBS. Dro uh, DroidCam OBS on my phone and S Streamlabs Stream Labels. And then, of course, I am using one other application, which is not exactly directly related to the stream, and that is Notepad. I have Notepad open on my screen with some show notes. So if I'm trying to remember what all I was going to talk about on stream, I just look up at my uh, Notepad document that I have open. And if you see me looking up a lot, that's mostly, especially when I go quiet, that's what I'm doing is reviewing my notes. And I find that incredibly helpful. I would recommend it to a new streamer is open a notepad and make some notes about what you want to talk about so that uh, if you do find yourself in a dead air situation, you can look up and remind yourself what you were intending to bring up. So I guess uh, I'll mention, uh, since I'm using my cell phone as 
a video source or a webcam, I did have to get something to hold the camera uh, and point it where I want it. And so I've been using this like um, phone clip holder that has a desk clamp on it. And that was just something I found on Amazon. Um, I'm sure it'll come up if you search like uh, phone clip holder clamp. <laughs> Doesn't exact, it's kind of a tongue twister. But um, I find it super useful. Uh, if you're also gonna be doing something like a Zoom call or something using your cell phone, it's pretty handy to have something that can hold it for you and keep it angled uh, pointing at your face or at whatever it is you're trying to video. And then I also got a light up above the desk. I have, I have a desk that has kind of a top shelf on it that's up above my monitor and my head. And so I got a, what's called a ring light for that. And a ring light is basically an LED light that has, uh, is in the shape of a ring, kind of like a halo. And it's nice because uh, compared to a desk lamp, which I also have desk lamp over here, uh, ring light basically is a more spread out light source. So it's gonna give you more complete softer lighting and less uh, defined shadows. So if you look at the shadows on the table here, uh, I think the intense shadow that you can see under my model is actually from my desk lamp over here. So if I turn that off, yeah, those shadows disappear. Here you can see the light coming from the ring light and you can see my phone is actually in the way of that light, which is why it helps to have a second light source. And um, something I run into as someone who wears glasses is that um, uh, I have to worry about my glasses picking up glare from the light. So if I look up and toward the light, you can see that I get a lot of uh, glasses glare. And so the having the ring light mounted up high having my desk lamp mounted off to the side are ways that I can cut down on that glare. And so I had to be kind of um, cognizant of that. And then the other thing I've done, which helps with glare is set my Windows desktop. Uh, I do have a monitor that's on right in front of my face. I have it set to dark mode. And when you set Windows to dark mode, it basically makes uh, all the windows like your notepad text editor black with white writing which creates a lot less light shining directly in my face from the screen and makes the glare not as bad. I wanted to see if I could go ahead and paint these little rivets here with this big brush uh, just because I already had paint on it and if I could do that it would uh, make them go really quick and it seems like it's working pretty well. So there's those picked out. And I see there's also some little dials and gears on here. I want to try and get those in silver too. Some bolts holding the legs on. Whatever these things are. It's funny, uh, it might be helpful to actually look up uh, information about this gun to understand what all these little bits and bobs I'm painting are. Might help in terms of painting them an appropriate color. But I'm just guessing basically. So that's a pretty good first step. We got silver all over the gun. Uh, so it is gonna be a black gun, but I want it to look like black paint was scratching off and it was silver underneath. And that's coming along well. And then everywhere that I glued on these little Orky armor panels, see if I can zoom in on that. Here you can see like an armor panel with uh, some rivets on the end. I'm gonna paint those uh, checkerboard. So that's the plan. Uh, I think we are done with this brush, done with silver. Going pretty quick. Oh wait, maybe I should paint a uh, second coat on the big silver areas. Uh, let me just uh, do that real quick. So I did end up buying a webcam. Uh, so my phone is getting the top-down footage of the miniature. And then the footage of my face is coming from a webcam. And I didn't do a ton of research before deciding which one to get. Uh, I basically just took the first recommendation or mention I, I came across. Uh, 
I was watching a Harris Heller video and he mentioned um, the C920 webcam as like just a sort of basic starter option. And I looked on eBay and I saw a C920 for sale used that was under $40. I think it was maybe 35 bucks or something for a, for a webcam that's in good working order. And I've had no complaints at all about the C920 webcam. It's been working great for everything I need. It's uh, getting this video of me right now. And so it's a webcam that has like a little screw on the bottom so it can easily attach to different kinds of tripods that have like a universal camera um, adapter on the top of them. And so for a tripod for the C920, I'm using uh, kind of a small tripod that sits up on my desk and it's called a gorilla pod and what makes the gorilla pod interesting is that it's kind of made to be a handheld and versatile uh, tripod so it has three legs but they're made from kind of a twisty coil so you can kind of uh, bend them into any shape you want and they'll hold that shape and hold up the webcam so basically you can twist each leg to get it exactly how you want it and then um, fine-tune the adjustment uh, if needed by just slightly bending each leg so I have, I like the uh, gorilla pod it's working well for me and what else about my setup here? Oh, I guess I was going to mention that a lot of laptops these days have a built-in web camera right above the screen. So if you have a web, uh, if you have a, a laptop, you may already have one camera ready to go. And if you want to do a setup like this, you just probably need your laptop and your uh, cell phone use droid cam OBS and you're, you'd be in business inside of uh, OBS studio each camera is like uh, referred to as a video source so you basically just create new video sources and then inside of each one you can customize it or adjust its properties and it'll have a drop down where it lists all the camera feeds coming into the computer and you can generally pick uh, you know your droid cam OBS your C920 webcam your built-in webcam will all be in that list so it's been pretty user-friendly if you're able to use like word editors or Photoshop you would probably be able to figure out uh, OBS studio without too much problem I do have to uh, do some troubleshooting at some point. I've been getting a problem with some dropped frames. Uh, OBS Studio tells me I've already dropped over 5,000 frames from this live feed, so it may be that I'm broadcasting at such a high resolution that my computer can't keep up with it. And when I do go to live stream games of 40K using my laptop, I'm not sure how well it's gonna be able to keep up with the video resolution either, so. That's something on my uh, list to test out this week. I was thinking of maybe doing it today, but I got sucked into a variety of other things and I did not get to it. All right, well, I do have one little area on this guy that I wanna paint kind of a brassy copper color. It looks like a, looks to me like a coil of copper wire down here at the bottom. I'll zoom in on it there. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that with a base coat of Balthazar Gold, which is a nice kind of coppery gold paint that has uh, great coverage. As you can see, even with just one coat, it's covering very nicely there. I didn't uh, get uh, primer on the bottom of this, but I'm just gonna paint right over it anyway All right. Well, there's a base coat of that 
Let's have a sip of coffee and review my notepad notes. So I guess I have briefly mentioned alerts and I'll talk about overlays. So alerts are what happen when someone like uh, someone new follows the, the channel and you have basically an on-screen animation and alert that play in the video. So each time someone follows the channel, I don't know if I've noticed it happening, but there will be a little animated zombie down below this video in the corner that has their name followed the channel. And that is an alert. An alert is different than the stream label, which stays on the screen, which you see above my head, uh, because basically the alert only plays once and the stream label needs to always be displayed. And so those are kind of kept track of in two different ways. Uh, an alert that only needs to play once, basically OBS Studio can be listening for that. And when it happens, OBS Studio can take care of it. But the uh, stream labels, basically, it your computer needs to have a file somewhere that's keeping track of who are the most recent people who have joined. And it needs to look up and reference that information and then update it each time someone new joins. And the reason is basically when I start a new stream, the stream label is able to remember who the last person who joined was, whereas stream alerts only need to be listening for something new to happen. So that's why you do have to run a separate application to have the stream labels and they reference a file on your computer and that's Streamlab stream labels is the application that does that. And then the alerts are also actually coming from Streamlabs. Uh, in order to set those up, you go to the Streamlabs website and you connect your Twitch account to it. And that's how it's able to basically listen for new people following your Twitch account. And you do have to add both the stream labels and the stream alerts um, inside OBS Studio application to your video feed. So basically they know where on screen to display. And they're always on screen, but they're basically invisible when they don't have information currently being displayed. So that's how that works. Um, maybe we'll uh, have some fun and start doing the red optics on this thing. Uh, looking at my uh, Example one I've already finished here. I've got basically a red light up above the gun, another one below, and then two kind of binocular lights down at the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do there. Two there, one underneath, and one on top. And to start, we're just gonna be using uh, Waz Stacker Red here. And it's a layer paint, but it has pretty good coverage. And then we'll um, mix in some orange to give that kind of a highlight in a little bit. So I'm going to use my Pagoda number four, kind of a medium brush to put this on. Just so it goes quick. I think the red needs a little shake. So besides alerts and stream labels, you also have something you can do called overlays. And overlays are basically just something that you can add to your screen or your video feed to make it look more interesting. And I made my own super simple overlays, which are, uh, if you see there's a black box around this video frame, that's just an a black image that's rectangular that I have layered in between this video of me and the video of the model behind me. So, uh, but there are much more interesting overlays that you can get. Uh, let's see, I'm not really at a good angle here. This will be better.
Trying to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Ah, but now I can't see what I'm doing. That works. And I think we're going to need quite a bit more red paint for this. So overlays, uh, you can actually get like interesting animated overlays. So like instead of just a simple black box around this video frame, you could have like a glowing kind of neon box or uh, maybe something animated like little flames coming off the video. And I think that overlays are kind of um, flashy and showy and kind of uh, like superfluous but uh, a lot of people love them and feel like a stream doesn't really look professional unless it has some really cool overlays on it and I think that is a thing uh, you know maybe my stream does look a little bit amateurish because my overlays are not animated and they're just super simple now part of the reasoning for that is because I I am a little bit concerned about processing power and the animated overlays may take up a bit of extra video processing to basically comp you know what 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 your computer's doing is basically compositing multiple layers of video together live uh, bef before it turns those into a stream to send out or video stream so uh, I haven't tested some animated overlays yet, but I'm just a little bit concerned that they may tax my computer. If I'm already dropping some frames, uh, I was a little bit worried that animated overlays might make that worse. But uh, most streamers use animated overlays or, or at least use some professional ones. And you can get those from uh, Streamlabs website and from some other places. So they're not uh, too difficult to download or install like a whole overlays pack. And that will basically immediately give you a more professional looking stream. Uh, what I've, what I, as far as the elements I, oh, I just painted my uh, stand there. Uh, so I guess I, here I can point at it from inside the video. Up here in the top right, you can see my little logo I made. That's just basically an image file that I have added in as an image source inside OBS Studio. But the overlays, I think, mostly work as a web source, meaning uh, you go to Streamlabs and you pick out the overlay pack you want to use and it will actually give you like a URL that you copy. Then you go into Streamlabs, I'm sorry, you go into uh, OBS Studio and add a web source to your video. And that's where you put in that uh, web URL. And it will just, I think like instantly install all those uh, overlays immediately onto your stream. So seems pretty easy. Uh, it's definitely on my to-do list of things to check out when I have some time to work on improving the stream, which I'm trying to do every week, trying to make incremental improvements to the stream. And the improvements I made this week, which were very important, was learning how to change my category and video title on uh, for Twitch. And I actually had to change those inside OBS Studio. And what was happening is uh, when you start uh, streaming on Twitch, you have the ability to create a stream schedule. And what this does is basically when people visit your stream page while you're not live, it will tell them when you're going to be live with a little schedule. And you can have uh, categories and titles on your stream schedule. Now I was a little bit naive in that I figured once I set up the categories and titles on my stream schedule, I kind of thought I could just start streaming at those times and somehow my stream was going to connect to my 
schedule and it was just going to copy the name and category from the schedule. That did not happen. So my first nine, I think, I think my first nine or 10 live streams were all uncategorized, meaning I wasn't showing up in the Warhammer uh, list of Warhammer streams and they had no title. So they probably didn't look too professional to someone who was just browsing through the uncategorized uh, streams even. And in general, um, it's not that easy to get your stream discovered by people who are on the Twitch website. But one of the main ways that you can do it is by setting the category of your stream. So at least then if somebody looks at all the Warhammer streams or all the art streams, they'll see you showing up in the list of 10 or 20 or 50 streams of that category. And I think in general, uh, for the Warhammer stream, Warhammer streams, I think there were usually about 15 or 20 of those. And for art streams, there's probably closer to 60. So from a standpoint of a beginner trying to get discovered, your odds are a little better uh, based on what I've heard being one of the 15 Warhammer streamers rather than one of the 60 art streamers. So that's why a lot of people who are painting Warhammer miniatures will choose to the Warhammer category as opposed to art. But on the other hand, there are usually more people watching art streams than Warhammer streams. So it may be that you're better off having a smaller slice of a bigger pie uh, that's, I think, partly up to personal choice or your strategy. Well, there we got some red uh, base coat on those areas. Uh, I could go ahead and start highlighting those now with orange, but I think I'll let that dry for a minute. And maybe we'll go ahead and start to block in some white paint on the little armor panels where I'm going to do checkerboard. So we're just going to start with a layer, white layer paint, I think, or maybe we'll, we'll try the base. I have this... Um, Corax white base paint, which I really hate to use because it's so thick and chunky and I feel like I'm almost harming my brush just by trying to mix this paint up. But we'll give it a go. It's kind of a, a gray white, um, but it's not terrible as a base when you're going to come on top of it with a brighter white layer paint. The base paints do have better coverage, that's why I'm starting with this. Trying to decide if I want to separate these. I think this makes it a little easier. So uh, this is, I think, the second stream where I'm actually in the Warhammer category, hopefully. Uh, I tried to make sure that was set up um, inside of uh, OBS Studio before I started today. And I also... I'm trying a different uh, title format. Uh, yesterday, I my title was painting uh, like a orc looted X-wing dacajet. So I basically had a title based on what I was painting. Where today I've got a title of something like how to stream on Twitch. Uh, figure I'll try having a title this time that's based on the topic of discussion. And my reasoning there was that people can kind of figure out what I'm painting by seeing what's on screen uh, or even what's in the video thumbnail. But when it comes to what's the discussion topic, it's easier to uh, convey that in the title of the stream than having to basically explain it to each person who joins, which I might end up doing anyway. In general, I would recommend keeping your stream uh, as clean as you can, uh, not cursing, talking about violence and that kind of thing, sexuality, uh, makes your stream more user friendly or more advertiser friendly, which does help Twitch and therefore helps your stream. The more that... Uh, you're able to attract advertisers to the platform, the more support you'll have as a streamer in that 
I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of way. And uh, I do think that what's coming for Twitch is that streams will eventually be automatically categorized based on how advertiser friendly they are. And that could mean more advertising revenue down the line for your stream. And uh, same thing on YouTube. YouTube already, I think, uh, automatically uh, has like an artificial intelligence watching streams, listening for material that might not be advertiser friendly and probably gets you demoted to a less lucrative uh, channel condition, basically. And when these companies are investing a lot in terms of the infrastructure to be able to host your video data and the bandwidth to broadcast you, it doesn't hurt to keep in mind what you can also do for them. I think that's fair. But uh, down the road, I think that one of the business models that people have been looking at is to eventually move from streaming on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook to basically your own website. So if you look at someone like, uh, I think deploymentzone.tv, it's essentially like a streaming website where you can watch Warhammer games that is similar to Twitch, but it's run by the actual people who are uh, started out uh, streaming the games. So a lot of uh, content creators, I think, are aiming to eventually move their live stream to their own kind of proprietary uh, website. All right, just kind of comparing this gun to the one I've already painted to see if I'm missing anything big. Uh, looking good so far. Here's what the gun's looking like. And I think I might let that Corax white dry just a little. We can go back to painting the uh, lenses for a bit. So for this, I'm gonna be mixing red and orange. And for the orange, let's see what it's called. We're gonna be using uh, Wild Rider Red. And we'll mix that with the Wazdaka to make some orange highlights on these gun lenses. And I'm also gonna move to a smaller brush. This is my small base brush, uh, Citadel. I think we'll get the orange paint on the brush first and then we don't have to rinse before dipping in the red. So try to keep your stream advertiser friendly, I would suggest. And certainly you are not allowed to play any like uh, copyrighted music on your stream. That will get you like a immediate channel ban I, as far as I know, as they do have like a program that listens for that kind of thing and will immediately recognize it. So you can't even have like the radio playing or and you have to be careful of who you let broadcast audio directly into your stream. Make sure they know that that is not gonna work. Well, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit on what I'm doing here. Kind of nice in um, Droid Cam OBS, I can just zoom in and out on my cell phone with two fingers and anywhere I tap on the screen, the camera will focus in on that area. So if you're using it and you're not getting the focus where you want it, it's very easy to adjust. And we're doing all these the same way. I'm basically just adding a crescent of lighter color along the bottom of each lens. And then we'll go a little lighter and a little smaller of a crescent on top of that. Then we'll add just a little point of light up at the top to make it look like a reflection of the sun. 
So now we're mixing in more orange to make a little bit of a lighter red, lighter orange. And doing the same thing. So let's see. Oh, so about music. Uh, you guys may be able to tell that there is some music playing quietly in the background here. And I also have some music on the countdown screen. And when I have a close up on the miniature, uh, like a preview video. And that music has all come from the same place, which is from Stream Beats. Stream Beats is a website started by Harris Heller, who's the sort of streaming guru. And he was actually a musician before he became primarily, I think, a streamer who talks about streaming. And uh, I think he was a musician with his wife and they had kind of a music business. And he has created Stream Beats in order to be a source for music for streamers who are worried about getting a takedown by playing copyright music. So all of the music on Stream Beats is available for streamers to use without having to pay any royalties and uh, as far as I know without even having to credit uh, stream beats although I'm happy to do so because it's such a great service he offers and I've just really been happy with uh, his music as far as background music it's pretty unobtrusive and I think adds a nice little something to the stream so I do definitely recommend checking out Stream Beats and he's got a bunch of uh, MP3 files you can download and use. And so far I haven't had any problems with them. So that's been great. I suppose the one issue you might run into is that the number of downloads per day is limited by uh, wherever he has them hosted. Maybe it's Apple Music or something. So if you are not able to download all the music you're trying to download, it may be that he's just hit his download limit for the day and you need to try again tomorrow kind of thing. All right, we are gonna do some white paint now on the armor, the sort of uh, bolted on armor plates. And we're gonna go over that Corax white and see if we can get a nice bright white. Uh, might as well go back to the uh, Pagoda number four here. I do find this uh, white scar is often kind of chunky and it pays to kind of uh, take a minute to mix it with your brush just to try to get it smoothed out before you start to apply it. So as far as setting up your PC desktop, uh, as far as what do you want on your screen when you're gonna be streaming, what works for me is over on the right side of my screen, I have my notepad open with my show notes on it. Next to that, I have the chat window from OBS Studio. So it's, uh, I have it arranged as a vertical window where anything that viewers of the live stream type in chat will appear in a log. So I can look up and see the last probably 40 or 50 chat messages. And, um, that way, uh, it's nice to have it next to your show notes because as you're looking up to see what the next thing you're gonna talk about, you'll also notice out of the corner of your eye if anyone has typed any uh, chat. And I had the problem the first uh, couple times that someone joined my channel and uh, chatted with me is that I just didn't see or notice their chat messages until maybe half an hour had passed. And by that time, the person had left the stream. So. Uh, generally, if people are typing in your chat, they're hoping, trying to have some kind of interaction with you while you're streaming. And if you don't notice, then they're likely to leave. You know, they just feel like, oh, well, I'm being ignored. No point trying to chat with this person if they're just going to ignore me. And so uh, I guess a part of that is you want to try and interact with your uh, viewers if they do make the effort of chatting with you. And 
uh, viewers of your live stream who do chat are much more likely to come back and return or donate or follow or subscribe. So interacting with them is pretty important in terms of growing your viewership and giving a good uh, live stream experience to the people who tune in. And so if you can motivate people to interact, that can also help your live stream for the same reason. And so some suggestions I've seen for ways to sort of promote interaction is uh, to have like your video title be a question so that as they come in to watch, they already might be coming up with an answer to that question and, and want to give it in chat as soon as they come in. And also, if you know you have some viewers in the stream, then it makes sense to ask a question once in a while to prompt them to chat and interact. Do I have anyone watching? <laughs> Is a simple question you can ask. But it can be a little embarrassing if you ask a question and then realize no one is uh, watching you live. And that is likely to be the case when you're new. I've had a lot of live streams where nobody uh, joined me live, but because I'm planning on uploading the videos of my live streams to YouTube, I want to be talking and chatting anyway, even though there's no one uh, in chat. And so the idea there is just that if you are making your live streams so that they will be a video that can be watched after the fact, you probably want to be talking about something engaging to make it a quality watching experience so that the viewers can get something out of it. Oh, I forgot one of these uh, armor plates down here at the bottom. Let's do that now. So for that reason, I suggest having uh, basically an idea of a discussion topic for every episode you do so that even if nobody joins you live, you can talk about something, discuss a topic, and then if you have viewers on YouTube, they can leave comments about your topic in the comments section of your video, and you can foster a discussion there. So if you are watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Tell me if you found this helpful. Are you thinking of starting your own live stream and would it be Warhammer related and what are some resources you found really helpful and has any of the information I'm giving changed since I made this uh, live stream and what are your tips and who inspired you to get into live streaming I think it would be pretty cool if I inspired someone else to start a live stream I was certainly inspired by a lot of the Warhammer 40k channels on YouTube and uh, one of the people whose live stream inspired me to live stream Warhammer 40k content is Liam Dempsey. He is one of the most popular and successful Warhammer 40k live streamers and he live streams I think on YouTube. Yeah, I saw him live streaming there uh, today, uh, New Year's Eve 2021. and. Uh, I just thought, wow, it looks like he's having fun. What he's doing doesn't look too challenging. And yet lots of people are enjoying it. So that inspired me to think I would also love to chat about 40K with people live. And he seems to do pretty well with uh, donations and subscriptions. And uh, eventually it would be awesome to be able to get enough support to do this full time in that way. And as far as um, streaming as a job or becoming a full-time or financially successful streamer, uh, I have gotten some pretty good tips from the YouTube videos I've been watching on the subject. And what uh, Devin Nash says is basically, if you're trying to become the top most successful streamer in any topic, and make a living off of ad revenue from people watching your stream, it's next to impossible. 
Like if I was going to try and catch Liam Dempsey in terms of number of viewers and amount of donations and subscribers, it's basically impossible because he's already got more viewers and it's unlikely that anything I do would catch up to that. Like at the same time that I'm getting more viewers, he still will be too. And the way that the websites like YouTube and Twitch direct people and suggest content to people, they're generally going to suggest the most popular channels in any category to new viewers because logically it makes sense that the most popular channels probably have the best, most engaging content. And if you're trying to get your users to stick around and watch, you want to provide them with the best, most engaging content that you have available. So a website like Twitch or YouTube is always going to suggest Liam Dempsey or whoever's at the top of any category over the other up and comers who are trying to catch up to them in popularity. So Devin Nash said, basically the idea that you're gonna reach the top 1% of most popular live streams is virtually impossible. It, it does happen. There are people who uh, gain a lot of popularity in a short amount of time, but uh, that's not the most likely way that you're going to succeed. And what he actually recommended as far as the best, most likely way to make a living live streaming is using Patreon or a similar direct support uh, platform like Patreon. And if you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a fundraising platform available to artists, but also to basically anyone that allows people to support you with um, like a monthly contribution. And you can have different tier levels of support and people can choose which one they're comfortable with. And then you can have different kinds of uh, rewards for people in different tiers. So you might have a tier level like give me $5 a month and I will list your name in like the end credits of my video. But give me $100 a month and you get to suggest discussion topics for videos. Or give me $1,000 a month and you get to appear on the stream and do interviews with me or, or paint with me or something like that. So you could have uh, different tiers of support that let people who are really well off, who have a ton of money, give you a ton of money and get something cool. And yet also able to have a huge group of people or a large group of people, or maybe even just a hundred people giving you $10 a month, 10 times a hundred would be a thousand dollars a month. That's pretty decent income, especially compared to what you're going to get from advertising revenue, say on YouTube. And in general, um, I think you don't get a huge amount from advertising on YouTube or Twitch, but uh, I could be wrong about that, unless you have a ton of viewers. So uh, starting a Patreon for Challenger Tabletop is one of my uh, goals for 2022. And I am excited about that. I haven't uh, taken any concrete steps to do it, but I don't think it takes a long time to set up. Uh, mostly you just have to think carefully about kind of the sales pitch you want to appear on Patreon and figure out what some cool uh, rewards you can have at different levels or tier levels of support. And then um, another way that some people make income from streaming is with uh, sponsorships. So I'm trying to think of who I've seen sponsoring um, uh, like Warhammer content. I think I've seen Frontline Gaming sponsoring like Battle Reports. And I think I've also maybe seen Deployment Zone TV, if, I, if I'm remembering right, sponsoring Battle Reports. So uh, once you do have some popularity and some followers of your channel, 
then you become more attractive to these companies that are looking to advertise or get viewers or sell battle mats or miniatures or whatever are more likely to uh, consider sponsoring your channel and uh, of course uh, people also sponsor just uh, have like product sponsors and that kind of thing so that's another way to make some income and I think both of those are generally more lucrative than simply trying to become popular enough that you can live off the ad revenue. And obviously if you do start your own streaming website, something like Deployment Zone TV, then you could have subscriptions to that service eventually become like a full-time income. And that would sure be cool. As far as uh, Challenger Tabletop, uh, kind of my one of my goals for Challenger Tabletop would be to uh, play games of Warhammer against people who uh, traveled to come play against me. And I could imagine having a website where it wasn't just me uploading battle reports or painting videos or whatever, but uh, where other people would be able to join and I would have a group of content creators working together creating essentially like a gaming network. And if you made something that was, you know, if you made uh, content that was compelling enough, you might be able to get people subscribing to it. And it could become like a full-time business. I think that would be really fun. And it may also be possible to join uh, with another group of people who are already doing something like that, like Deployment Zone TV. So those are some strategies for making income from streaming or supporting and improving your stream. I've mostly been treating this like a hobby so far. I already love to paint and I'm already painting miniatures very often so I just pretty much got all this uh, equipment out of my own non-existent hobby budget wasn't really planning ahead with these checker marks so trying to make it so that they end on a, another white box in the corner here all right, well, let's take a sip of coffee. Oh yeah, I was talking about my desktop setup. So over on the right, I've got my show notes, then I've got my stream chat. And then on the left, uh, I guess on the bottom, I have my Streamlabs labels. So it's basically just showing me a list of all the most recent followers, because uh, when it shows up in, um, OBS Studio, the text is a bit too small for me to read what's above my head there. But if I look down low, I can see Mitzi is followed. And before Mitzi was sized, thank you, good to see you last stream. And Mini Scribbler also followed last stream. And before that was uh, Terrigan29. So hi to all of you. Thank you for uh, following the channel. And I really appreciate your support. And I'm able to give those shout outs because I have the stream labels open. And then above that, I have OBS Studio, which is taking up about a quarter of my screen. And in OBS, I have uh, two side-by-side -side videos. One is showing what I'm broadcasting, and the other one lets me stage what I wanna show next. So right now, that's uh, the mini video, so I can fade back and forth between this picture of what I'm painting and the painting cam, as I call it. And each of these sort of scenes of what you see on screen is set up in advance and saved as a separate scene. So I call this one that you're looking at right now the uh, the uh, painting cam. And then I call this the main cam. So if I just wanna have only my face and talk to the camera, I can go to the main cam. And then I also have the countdown 
which looks like this. I, I use it to uh, before the stream to let people know I'm about to start. And let's go back to the main cam and to the painting cam. So that's four different scenes that I use. And uh, I switch between all of those using the OBS Studio uh, application. And it gives me some other useful information, like I can see uh, that the music is playing. Uh, I can't hear it because I don't want the music to be playing both through the stream to you guys and also coming out my speakers into my microphone because then I'm going to get feedback. And uh, by having it show me visually that the music is playing and how loud in uh, OBS Studio, I can at least have that reassurance that you guys are hearing the music even if I'm not. So lots of useful information there. Uh, and then I have a couple buttons that let me that I can click with my mouse to switch cameras and that kind of thing. Let's make sure I'm, yep, everything looks good. So I hope you guys appreciate all the effort it takes to get the stream set up and looking cool. I've tried to create a interesting looking stream that's also still kind of simple. I like, uh, I've kind of like a minimalist um, design preference. Like uh, I don't have a lot of artwork up on my walls. I guess the one thing I do have is, um, oh, well behind me, you can see I have a map of the United States with the course I took on one of my motorcycle trips and some photographs from that trip. And downstairs I have some display cases showcasing my miniatures uh, up on the walls. I will do an episode about how I made those at some point. But um, in general, I, I almost like, you know, blank walls and simple, uncluttered interfaces and that kind of thing. So that's why I have this kind of bare bones stream that doesn't have animated uh, overlays and that kind of thing. I just like a simple, quiet, meditative almost aesthetic, I guess a Zen aesthetic kind of. I think I need to water down these paints more. I'm trying to get nice thick coverage with this black so I don't have to do two coats, but I was kind of overdoing it with the thickness of the paint. And we're almost done with this one armor panel. Painting a checkerboard across it, I mean. Just about two black boxes left to paint. That's more watered down. It's not as black, but that's okay. Still looks all right. Kind of nice not having it super black because um, there's a rivet here and the rivet would kind of disappear if I was painting it super dark. I almost had the paint get out of control there because it was a little too watered down. Okay. Well, that's like one armor panel painted. Gives you an impression of what I'm going for there. I think I do want the paint just a little darker on that last couple boxes. There we go. This model's going pretty quick. I thought it would, especially after the two X-Wings we did uh, the last two streams. That was that was really like marathon painting sessions. I think one went four and a half hours. That's probably no one's going to watch that uh, YouTube video through all the way, but who knows, maybe. Okay, well, I think let's just keep on with this uh, checkerboard and see if we can get all of them painted in short order. What's my next uh, show note? So I have four scenes that I set up. I have the countdown, the main camera, the mini camera or video, or in this case, picture, and the painting cam, which we're using right now. Stream title and category. I mentioned how important it is to set that up inside OBS Studio so that 
when you do stream, you are showing up in the category you intend to. Uh, I think let's take that off so I don't um, handle the bit I just painted. And let's dive right in on another one. Maybe we'll just do three boxes across. Um, my cousin Nick was uh, watching my last stream and he suggested I get like a stencil for this bit, which I think was a pretty good idea. But it doesn't take too long to do it by hand and I have a pretty steady hand, so this works. Logo, okay, yeah, I guess uh, that's something you might want to think about if you're gonna get into streaming is making yourself a little logo. Uh, I have mine, oops, up in the uh, corner of the screen up there. Got my little crossed sword and battle ax. And you can also see I painted it on my uh, painting mat here, my work mat. And I also sprayed the same logo on my dice tray downstairs so that when we are playing games of 40K, you'll see the logo on screen where we're rolling our dice. And that's been fun. Kind of the idea is just to give people an instant way to recognize your channel as a brand. And I'm able to use the same logo on Instagram so if someone's used to seeing my posts there and they come in here to watch the live stream they'll be seeing a consistent kind of visual uh, theme with the logo uh, I wonder if I should make this I guess we'll go all the way to the corner here and if you're not like a designer I mean I I did study design in college and been doing art for a long time, so making a logo is not intimidating for me, but if it's not your specialty, you could always have someone create one for you. Usually it's not too hard to find uh, someone in Discord or Facebook or at your local hobby shop or something who does have some design experience enough to create something simple. And it doesn't have to be amazing, just something to kind of give you your own little unique look. And it's funny, uh, oh, hey, Nicholas, good to see you, my friend. My cousin's in, uh, in the chat. Great to see you, Nick. Just talking about you, how you were suggesting I use a stencil for these little uh, grid patterns. Checkerboard. And the topic today uh, might be of interest to you. It is how to live stream and basically talking through my setup and all the stuff I've learned so far about live streaming. And we were just talking about creating a logo. I bet you wouldn't have a hard time making a logo. I don't know how much you've used uh, design software. I actually made mine in GIMP which is like a free version of Photoshop. I learned Photoshop um, in high school and got pretty proficient at it in college, but it's an expensive program. And I discovered that pretty much everything I needed to do can be done for free with GIMP. Yeah, Happy New Year, Nick. Are you guys having a, a party there? So I made this uh, logo in GIMP uh, with the sword and axe. Probably took me about an hour. And then um, I printed it off to make a stencil and cut that out with an X-Acto knife to spray it on my mat here. Wasn't too hard. And then uh, Nick says, cool, I used to use Quark. Uh, that's an old one, isn't it? I don't know how long ago Quark was popular. Or is it still? I actually haven't heard of it. So one cool feature of uh, Twitch is that it does let you almost automatically upload your videos to YouTube. 
after you've made done your live streams. So I've got a new YouTube channel, Challenger Tabletop on YouTube. But uh, Nick says, just getting ready to play some board games. That's fun. Playing some board games with the kids. Sounds like a great way to ring in the new year. I'm getting ready to go work uh, overnight at the hotel after this at 11. And that's why I'm getting to drink a bunch of coffee. My brother in London already ce celebrated uh, New Year's. I exchanged uh, text messages with him earlier. I found uh, like a live map that shows you where it's New Year's around the world. That was kind of fun. And I saw immediately that it was like 11 or 11.30 in London. So got him a nice timely Happy New Year's. Well, I think I just said Happy New Year. Do you say Happy New Year or Happy New Year's? You said Happy New Year. I feel like that's more <laughs> grammatically correct. But for the longest time, I would always say Happy New Year's. But I think we're used to saying New Year's because of New Year's Eve, which is sort of like the name of the of tonight. But if you just shorten it to Happy New Year's, it sounds a little weird. Cork is one of Adobe's first. Oh, late 90s. All right, yeah. So uh, to upload to YouTube, basically, you have, I think, about two weeks to upload your videos from your completed videos from Twitch to YouTube. And if you don't do it in that amount of time, then they disappear from Twitch. And I guess if you are a Twitch affiliate, they stick around longer. So that is one advantage to joining that program. But for me, it's uh, been pretty convenient to just wait till Friday when I've done my Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, live streams. And then while I'm working my overnight shift, I'll just take a moment to log on to Twitch and uh, one, two, three, upload them all to YouTube. And you get to pick a name for the video. And then once it's on YouTube, you can go into the YouTube editor and make further changes to it. Change the uh, like uh, thumbnail, for instance. So that's been working pretty well. And if you're smart about it and you've uh, you know had some good discussion topics in your live stream, then you'll actually edit the video either before you upload it to YouTube or afterwards so that you aren't just uh, uploading a straight up recording of a three hour live stream, but instead you condense it down to either like a 30 minute show that just um, cuts out all the dead air and sticks to the topics you're discussing, or you chop it up into several, you know, five to 20 minute videos that are each focused on one topic that you discussed. And the way that YouTube uh, sort of uh, search works you're usually going to be a lot more successful with these sort of um, focused videos that deal specifically with one topic of discussion because that's kind of what people search for. So uh, I guess I've tried to do that to some extent with the discussion topics of each episode on, here on Twitch. So if somebody is interested in live streaming 40K and they're a complete beginner, they, my goal is to create a two to three hour live stream here where they could watch the whole thing and get quality information the whole way through. But for the most part, those videos could be cut down to more focused, better edited, and more engaging videos that would do better on YouTube than a uncut live stream would because uh, part of the fun of watching a live stream is getting to interact with the streamer live. And if you are watching it as a video after the fact, it's not quite as engaging because it's missing that. So trying to post content on YouTube that's meant for YouTube and live stream 
uh, is kind of a slightly separate experience that's maybe doesn't always translate. But I've had some pretty good success with my videos on YouTube. Uh, just having my new channel up for a couple weeks, I've already been getting some views. And they're not exploding, getting thousands of views or anything, but I'm happy to see that some of them are getting 10 or 20 views. I think the most successful one so far was one of my first, which was how to run a narrative campaign for Warhammer 40k. And I think part of the reason for that is that I have somewhat unique ideas on that subject and not a lot of people are necessarily giving advice on that subject on YouTube. So if somebody is looking for advice on starting a narrative campaign, then my video is probably not as far down the uh, list as if they were searching for something like uh, which Space Marine chapter should I play? Which is another topic I did. There's probably other people who have better edited, more tightly produced videos on a more popular subject like that. But it's been fun. Uh, and it's nice that uh, Twitch makes it very easy to upload my content to YouTube after I'm uh, finished with my live stream. And I do recommend that uh, people consider that because basically if all you do is live stream, then any time you're not live, you're not attracting any new viewers or fans or getting, getting out there. Whereas if you upload to YouTube, your content is always available for people to watch and you might be getting new followers and subscribers while you're asleep or while you're at work or doing something else. So as far as growing the channel, I think that helps. Nick says you could also just break the live stream into parts for upload to YouTube and double your search engine optimization. That's true. That's something I've been thinking about. Part of the reason that I started live streaming as opposed to making edited videos for YouTube is just the amount of time involved. Uh, when I uh, did a practice game of Warhammer 40k and sit, sat down to edit it into a, you know, 30 minute battle report, I realized it's a huge amount of work to edit a video. I mean, this is something I already knew because I had done video editing in the past and I, uh, you know, took classes on video editing in college and I, I was expecting it, but it really showed me how much nicer it is to be able to simply live stream. And then when you're done and you click stop streaming, you don't have any more work that's been created for you that you have to worry about. And I uh, did try going on to YouTube just to add chapter marks to the timeline on one of my videos. So each time I went to a different discussion topic, there would be like a little separated area in the timeline of the video with a title of the of what I was talking about in that section. And just doing that took probably 20 or 30 minutes because basically I'm scrolling through, uh, scrubbing through the timeline on a three hour video trying to find each place I start discussing a new topic and then typing in the start and stop time of that section and typing in a title. Just that took a, a fairly long amount of time. So I imagine that actually editing and breaking up into separate videos would take even longer. And basically I just don't have time for that. I'm working two jobs and then, you know, cooking all my own meals and washing my own dishes and having to do the basic kind of self-care stuff like laundry and making the bed. I don't have, you know, an extra three hours a, a week or two hours per live stream to, to edit, really. Maybe I could do some of that on my overnight shift at the hotel. So I do have some time that I haven't been taking advantage of there, but it's a great idea. Definitely a great idea. And I have thought about it, but 
I do think that one of the cool things about live streaming is that it's fairly user friendly and kind of easy compared to editing videos. Uh, for a while I uh, did make uh, Let's Play video game videos for YouTube and I actually ended up taking those down this year. They did get, you know, a few of them had thousands of views but I never got any money from it and I felt like I was starting this new adventure with uh, Warhammer 40k and painting and that kind of thing. I just kind of wanted a fresh slate and so it made sense to me to take them down but I do sometimes feel a little bit of regret that all the effort I put into those videos is no longer watchable but I do have some video files on my computer so if I really cared I could upload them again but I don't see it happening. I figured it was just kind of a, an exper fun experiment that I tried for a while that didn't really pay off. But with this I do feel a bit more motivation partly from the fact that live streaming is easier to do and that um, not as many people are doing it when it comes to live streaming games of Warhammer 40k. It has certainly become more of a popular thing. There's a lot more competition in that category today than there was three or four years ago. But the total number of people live streaming games of 40k battle reports is not that huge. It's kind of a small pond. So better to be a small fish in a small pond than a small fish in a giant pond, which is how I felt with uh, Let's Plays. Hey, Nick says, just opened our crackers. New Year's crackers joke for you. Okay, I'm ready for it. If you guys don't know, crackers are like a thing that I think is popular in England where you kind of, uh, it's like a little firecracker where you pull on both ends and it explodes and then it has usually like a joke or a prize inside, or maybe both. So we're about to get a, a joke from the uh, holiday cracker here. When is a boat like snow? Well, what does snow do? It's white, it's cold. A boat could sink, it could float. Snow, you could have a snow cone. Oh, I've got nothing. You gotta tell me the answer. The punchline. When is a boat like snow? We're about to find out. I hope this one's good. It's gonna be a groaner, I'm sure. In terms of... Uh, when it's a drift, uh, like a snow drift or a boat is a drift. It's pretty good. Nice punny joke there. When it does come to getting uh, paid for your YouTube videos, getting or, or I guess um, taking direct donations over Twitch, I have heard people suggest you should create a business PayPal just so that um, on like a normal PayPal account when you get payments, it gives out your email address, your full name, and that kind of stuff, maybe even your home address. So uh, if you want that kind of information to remain private, having a business PayPal is a safer way to accept donations. Uh, stream schedule, yeah. Uh, good way to grow your stream is to stream on a regular basis. So like I do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, stream schedule on Twitch is a nice easy way to set that up and I would say just don't overdo it. Um, streaming every day when you don't have a lot of viewers is not guaranteed to grow your stream so uh, you do have to kind of work smart not just work hard so I hear. Looking for my, oh I guess this is what I was looking for, Brass Scorpion is what I'm going to use on this little uh, Looks like copper wires. And what else do I have for you? 
creating a community for your content. So I kind of address the fact that Twitch and YouTube are going to usually direct new viewers to the channels that are already popular. And that doesn't help you out very much if you're a new channel or you don't already have a lot of viewers. And so, especially if you're streaming on Twitch where that problem is especially uh, bad. Yes, Patreon, yep, we've been talking about Patreon. Uh, Patreon, good way to make income. But when it comes to attracting people to come watch you, uh, I have found that a good uh, way to build some community and get some attention is on Instagram. Instagram, at least in the 40K world, has a lot of people really involved in it who are very interested in seeing new content and very ready to follow new channels. And there's also kind of um, a culture of people following you back. Hey, we got a new follower. Welcome Scrapper84, great to have you in the channel. Today we're talking about how to stream on Twitch and business uh, ideas and Instagram and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Uh, very curious uh, to hear your thoughts on it and definitely if you're something you've thought about doing. And I was just saying that um, a good way to attract new viewers is by sharing your work on Instagram. And one of the things that I've started to try to do on Instagram is post like a story with a countdown. So it tells people basically I'll be starting my next live stream in 16 hours or however long. I put it up usually about a day before I go live. And that way, if anyone comes across it, it sort of directs them there. Scrapper says, I played 40K back in third and fourth editions. Awesome. I got back into it after 12 years. It's basically what not to do. I spill a lot of paint. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not exactly the uh, best painter myself here. Uh, my goal is usually just to get the models painted to kind of like a tabletop plus or battle ready plus kind of level. Uh, in order to get them on the table. And I definitely don't want to be stuck working on the same model day after day for weeks because if you look at my to-do list here, yeah, a ton of stuff to paint. So yeah, trying to do basically each model in a single sitting. And today we are painting a proxy mech gun. This is a World War II German 88 artillery gun which I'm going to be using as an orc mech gun, uh, specifically the custom mega cannon. And I play Goffs. They have the black color scheme with uh, usually checkerboard for decoration. And so that's the uh, color scheme I'm using here. And I've been doing the uh, Twitch live streams for about four weeks now. And I'm still kind of new at it, but I've been figuring it out. Uh, and just kind of sharing both what I've figured out and learned and also what I the advice I've been hearing on YouTube in my kind of study there. And uh, welcome back to 40k. I've been noticing a lot of people saying they're coming back to the hobby after years and years. Uh, personally, I took a break when I went to college and I really didn't think I was going to get back into 40k again. And then I found myself working at a video game studio uh, called Garage Games in Eugene, Oregon. And I was working like eight, nine hour days doing computer 3D animation. And that was when I realized I probably have the endurance now to paint a whole army of 40K, which uh, previously I'd only ever really finished one or two models. I was like a real perfectionist. And since then I've learned to do batch painting and lower my standards and also some of the techniques like ink washes that speed things up while still giving you a cool looking result. And that's what I'm doing right now is an ink wash of Nuln oil. Uh, I started with black primer and I did uh, some silver dry brush to make it look like the metal had been kind of scratched and chipped along all the edges. 
And now I'm coming in with this um, Null Noil Black Wash to just kind of dirty it up a bit, make it look grimy and dark, and also to kind of back off the brightness of that silver a bit. And we're hanging out with my cousin Nick, celebrating uh, New Year's Eve. Maybe it's already 2022 where you are, Scrapper. You'll have to let us know. We're here on the West Coast in Oregon, in the U.S. If you don't know, Oregon is just north of California. Pretty much everybody knows where that is. E Eastern Standard Time. Oh, it's about to be New Year's Eve in 19 minutes for you, Scrapper. That's cool. And we're coming up on, th then that's when we'll hit the two hour mark for this stream. So that's where we're at. I'm streaming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at seven o'clock uh, Pacific time. And I'm gonna be working at a hotel tonight at midnight doing the overnight shift. So I'm able to drink a lot of coffee now to, cause I'm gonna be up all night. So talking about, oh, uh, once I get to 2022, 20, I'll let you know how it is. Okay, good. I think everyone's worried it's gonna be 2020 part two. Although I think it'd be better to call it part three, really. So uh, let's see. So Instagram is a good way to build a community. Basically on Twitch, you kind of have to like it's kind of best to build your community and then bring them to Twitch because Twitch isn't going to help you out a lot in terms of getting discovered. Although at least you're a little better off in a category like Warhammer where there's not already hundreds of streams going every night. Uh, so on Instagram, I've been using the stories and putting a, like a countdown timer on those so that uh, if someone sees that, they can see how long it is until the next stream. And the other thing I've noticed on Instagram that seems like a really great thing is doing video stories. Uh, I've been seeing some people um, who consistently post a lot of video stories of themselves saying just stuff like happy Monday or, uh, you know, how's your day going today that really kind of give you a feeling like um, like you almost have like a personal relationship with this person. It's kind of like getting a video message directly from them when you're watching their stories. And it's easy to interact with the person by responding to their story. So that seems like a really good way of kind of building a following and getting some kind of positive attention that can help build a community for your channel or whatever your content you're making. Uh, now this wash really went on a bit thick there. I'm just going to use a little bit of water on the top of the gun to kind of drive the wash away. And that'll hopefully make it look a little more like it's being lit from above. Knocked over my Null Oil, but uh, fortunately it was empty enough that none spilled. That's pretty rare. It's uh, like a, a trope now to knock over your Null Oil and spill it all. Hopefully we're still on camera, yep. I am getting better at keeping my uh, miniature painting on camera. Uh, definitely a few of my videos, a few of my first videos, I have a tendency to stray off camera with my miniature that I'm painting, so you really can't see much at all for minutes at a time, which of course I've tried to get better at. And try not to have too much dead air, of course which uh, helps to have your show notes available and it doesn't hurt to have something you can take a sip of while you reference those. So a few other ways to build community and get some attention for your, uh, for your channel, or your stream. Like on Instagram, I would say a good way is to give shout outs to other people. Generally, people really appreciate getting a shout out uh, where you do a story or something linking to their Instagram page. And the more you do that, the more you tend to get on other people's radar as they remember you since you gave them a shout out, but they're also more likely to give you a shout out in 
uh, as kind of payback. Not that you necessarily want to try and like arrange that in advance. It's just if you're more or less friendly and helpful to others, it's more likely that you're going to get that kind of help returned. And then uh, I do also recommend creating a Facebook page and or a Facebook group. So whenever I upload any um, new stuff to the Challenger Tabletop Instagram, it automatically copies it over to a Challenger Tabletop Facebook page that people can follow. And then I can also share those posts in groups. Scrapper says, one thing I see as far as the Warhammer community now is how much it has grown. There are few and far between toxic people in this community. Most will make suggestions regarding rules or paint uh, or point you in the right direction for inspiration. That's true. I feel like it's a very positive community and it hasn't always been that way. Like I think that there are some kind of notorious people in the 40K community who have been kind of toxic or disliked for one reason or another. But also traditionally there have been like the guys at the game store who have a bad attitude or are constantly causing problems or getting in fights. So it's kind of surprising what a really supportive group of people I've found, especially on Instagram. And like uh, two of the people who were immediately supportive to me on Instagram were uh, Turbidius and uh, Dark Elf Aaron. They have a kind of a show that they do on Instagram Live, where which is their hobby meet and greet. So they basically had me on for like a little five minute interview on their hobby meet and greet along with a bunch of other people. And that was a great way to get my name out there, but also to kind of become friends with those two. And uh, someone on Twitch who has been supportive in that way is Dr. Rhino, who has kind of a similar painting stream to this. And he invited me to the Dr. Rhino Discord group and he has a channel on that group where you can post announcements that you're going live on Twitch. So he'll post when he's going live, but also like a dozen other people are posting every time they go live. And so Discord is another place I would say is a pretty good place to attract followers and attention for your channel. And besides Dr. Rhino's page, there's also something like that on the Warhammer 40K Discord as well. And the one I'm talking about is just Warhammer slash 40k. I don't know how official it is. I'm sure there's lots of different um, 40k channels on Discord. And if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a chat app that has uh, where you can create your own channels and pages and have members for, uh, come and join it. And so... It's basically a, a place where you can chat 24 hours a day about whatever topic you want in a specialized group of people that's interested in that topic. So that's been fun and nice place to get some support. And in general, I would say that uh, joining, you know, watching other people's Twitch streams is both a good way to get inspiration and see basically what other people are doing and what's working for them, but also a way to build community in that they will appreciate having you in their audience. And if they get to know you that way, they're more likely to stop in and check out your stream when they're not live. So I've had some people who I've followed on uh, Twitch then show up and become viewers in my channel. And that's another cool way to build community and grow your channel. Well, hey, we are actually looking pretty close to finished on this. Uh, let me put it side by side with the first one I did a while back and we'll see if they're both looking kind of similar. I think so. Well, let's uh, maybe uh, take a little break from painting and just uh, go through a couple more of my notes on the topic. So Facebook page, Facebook group. Uh, I created a group on Facebook for players who want to come 
play on the channel once I start doing uh, live streams and battle reports. So I think I've already got about maybe 15 people in that group and I'm trying to get games scheduled. I think I have two games scheduled for January already. So that's exciting and a good way to grow your community. And then, uh, oh, uh, Scrapper says, plus it's good background noise, almost as good as an audiobook while painting. Yeah, I actually found that I like uh, watching hobby streams and hobby discussions while I'm painting, and that's what motivated me to do this in the first place. Uh, part of my philosophy is to try and create content that I would enjoy as a viewer. Uh, that's certainly what I'm going for with 40k battle reports. And that was part of what led me to start out just streaming painting. Uh, and uh, it is fun to have somebody talking 40k while you hang out and paint. Uh, it really kind of replicates the feeling of uh, hanging out painting at the game store with a group of other players sitting at the t same table, which is something I used to do five years ago and is definitely harder to do now in the era of COVID. Uh, if you are starting a channel and, and you basically are starting out streaming to no viewers, I do suggest having a discussion topic so that you can be talking when someone joins the chat, it won't just be dead silence. You'll have something you're already talking about that they can participate in the discussion. And if you have some friends, or in my case, family, like my cousin Nick, who can pop in and watch uh, for some of your stream, that's a good way to uh, start out at least having someone to interact with so you aren't having to uh, uh, basically talk to nobody. But it doesn't hurt to expect zero viewers to start because that's kind of where everybody begins and I try to go into every stream assuming I might have no viewers and that way I can be happy if I get any and if I don't I don't have to feel bad it's just what I expected so uh, I try to keep it positive that way and if you do get viewers chatting definitely good idea to engage with them if people are trying to talk to you and you're just ignoring them they're probably immediately going to leave your stream. Uh, I had that experience when I didn't see people's chat message right away and I don't notice it till 30 minutes later. Usually by that point they're gone. And uh, a few other things. Uh, you can create some positivity and goodwill about your channel by supporting a charity. Uh, the live streamer Dr. Rhino does that. He's always raising money for Save the Rhinos. And I noticed that uh, Liam Dempsey, when I was watching his live stream on YouTube earlier, he was also donating 10% of all his donations to charity. So viewers can feel like they're supporting a good cause and support the stream at the same time. And uh, I already said, try and make something that you would want to watch. That's my philosophy here. And I talked about some of the ways you can make money. Uh, ads, not the best. The chance of becoming successful enough that you make a lot of money from ads is, is basically incredibly uh, unlikely. You gotta be in probably the top 1% of all streamers and that's virtually impossible to do. Uh, instead, you're more likely to make money with donations and sub sub subscriptions and you want to set up a business PayPal for that to protect your personal information. And probably even more lucrative than that would be sponsorships and probably the best way to make money doing this kind of thing is to set up a Patreon. And that's uh, one of my goals for 2022. Hey, just about five minutes till uh, New Year's for you, uh, Scrapper. Uh, well, let me take another look at this miniature. I think my ink wash is now dry. And I can think about whether or not I want to do something else to this. Uh, I am seeing that the ink wash kind of pooled up along the uh, mold line in the middle of this uh, kind of binocular here. And I don't really like that. So I probably want to hit it with some bright silver to cover that up. Maybe I can even kind of wipe it off with my finger there. I think that helped. Uh, that already looks a little better, but I think I'll do a little bit of bright silver on there, maybe some silver scratches. 
And other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with how this gun is looking. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Yeah. I think this is pretty much done. Oh, you know, maybe I'll use some black paint and just kind of back off some of the areas where the silver got a little out of control during the dry brush. Uh, so I did have some, one of my goals for this year, uh, I guess it's actually my 2022 New Year's resolution, is to stream games of Warhammer 40k at least once a month, or we'll say at least 12 games this year. And I do have, I think, two or three games lined up for January. Uh, at least one of which uh, we're definitely planning to stream. And I have some kind of ideas for streaming Warhammer 40k on Twitch, and I've been thinking about it and kind of working on it a bit. Yesterday I was setting up cameras in the uh, studio room to figure out what's a good uh, camera setup, and I'll be using my laptop, or at least I'm planning to use my laptop for that. But my desktop PC does struggle a little bit with dropped frames and that kind of thing uh, streaming on Twitch. So I'm a little bit worried about how the laptop will do. Plus, I'm going to have three camera feeds for that, um, where I only have two for my painting videos. So here I've got one camera feed showing my face and then another camera feed showing the model. But for recording games of 40K, I want to have one camera showing the table, one camera showing the dice rolls, and probably a third camera showing like a wide screen shot of the room so that you can see both of the players. Uh, there's kind of been a few different styles of how people have been broadcasting games of 40K. And I would say that the most popular kind of layout right now is the one that was uh, created by the guys at uh, Tabletop Titans. Uh, Scrapper says, one thing I've never seen on a battle report, a camera from the model's view. That's That would be cool. I have a uh, kind of a, uh, a gorilla pod tripod for one of my cameras and it's uh, just about one foot tall. And so that's a nice way to get a camera down at the uh, on the table. But models I view would even be like lower than that. You'd almost want the camera sitting directly on the table. And I agree, that could be really fun. Uh, I was watching some live stream game the other day. Oh shoot, I don't remember what the channel was. But they, if you want to find them, they did a video of the new Crusher Stampede Tyranids list uh, just the other day. And they had a camera that was on a, um, I think they did like, I'm, I've got my cell phone camera here uh, using Droid Cam. It sends a camera feed over Wi-Fi to the computer. So I think they were doing something like that where they had cell phones mounted on a Gorilla Grip tripod that they could hold in their hands and they could basically switch from video of the room to the feed from one of these handheld cameras whenever they wanted to basically do a handheld cam showing stuff on the table. So I thought that was a pretty good uh, move that I could copy because uh, in my current setup, I'm going to be using the camera on the laptop to show the room, the Wi-Fi camera, that, or the um, webcam that I have here showing my face would be showing the table. And then I have a really crummy old uh, webcam that would be pointed at the dice tray where you don't really need high resolution because it's just going to be a really small camera feed on screen. So that leaves my cell phone camera free. It could be on a Gorilla Grip and I could switch to that for model's eye point of view, like you say. So I think that's a great idea. And uh, let's see, what else do I wanna do for my battle reports? 
Uh, generally, the people will switch back and forth between a shot of the room showing the players at the table where you can kind of see the miniatures, and then they'll switch to a second camera that's like top down, pointed straight at the table. And I'm thinking I, I don't care as much about showing the players. I, I do want to try having the main camera pointed at the table, but more from like a three quarters angle like if you were standing at the side of the table looking down at it that's kind of the view I, I want to try uh, I did um, do a test of that maybe I'll show it on screen at the end here um, and then uh, people have been using overlays like I have these overlays showing a recent follower here and I have an overlay behind this video image of a black border and I have the overlay of the logo over on the side uh, uh, up here. So people have been using those overlays to show like the names of the players and the current score of the game. Uh, I'm thinking that generally requires a third person who's not playing the game to be controlling the scores on the computer. And since I'm not expecting to have a third person handy to do that, we're gonna be using just flip cards on like a little scorecard standing on the table kind of like you see at uh, sporting events sometimes they have these little flip cards so we're going to try that kind of analog style but i still want to have the names of the players and what faction they're playing up at the top of the screen so i'll use um, overlays for that and it is cool when they have someone who is managing the broadcast from the laptop because they could be reading off chat messages during the game and without having someone doing that, I'm thinking we're going to have before the game, we'll have uh, sort of a little interview section where we're showing off the armies and we'll be able to read chat off of the laptop. And then we'll probably have a break halfway through the game, like a halftime where we do the same thing, go respond to chat and then respond to chat again at the end of the game. And that means that we're probably not going to be reading the chat while we play for the most part, and it'll more be like an opportunity for the viewers to chat with each other. And hopefully people will get the hang of that. And we'll see how it goes. Um, and then something else that is gonna take some time to improve at, improve at is the actual performance of the players while we play. Um, I think that uh, it's going to be easy to have a lot of dead air and mumbling and breaks to look up rules uh, while we're playing, like normally happens when you're playing 40K. And it's going to take some time before we become very professional in our play to where we're more engaging and entertaining to watch. But that's something I'll be paying attention to and hopefully uh, we'll get better at as time goes by. And I have thought about taking the videos and trying to edit them down, but at least to start, we'll probably just post the entire live stream game as a single uh, video. And uh, yeah, the goal is to constantly improve the stream. I'm trying to do that with this, uh, with these painting streams, and we'll try to do the same thing with battle reports. And lastly, I'm going to try to have fun with it. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun doing these live streams. They've been more fun than I expected. And I want that to continue. So I'm going to try and make sure that uh, I'm having fun and my guest players are having fun. And hopefully it'll be the kind of thing where people want to come play games against me and come visit me here uh, because it looks so fun. That would be kind of my goal for the channel would be that eventually I get people traveling to come play 40k against me or inviting me to come play 40k against them and hopefully I would actually be able to afford to do that. That would be kind of the long term goal. I'd love to be able to get big enough and popular enough that I'm able to arrange games with some of the Warhammer 40k players on YouTube who I'm a fan of and inspired me to get started in doing this. So there's my discussion of streaming and painting and playing 40k on Twitch and YouTube. Scrapper says, even if I'm having a bad day, I still stick to my schedule as far as stream days. Hey, I'm going to follow your screen, your stream. Just not feel, feeling it sometimes. Then I start to stream and it stops being important about followers and subs and stuff. 
Yeah, I've streamed a few days where I kind of went into it feeling kind of down. <laughs> and by the end of the stream, I'm feeling great. So I've had that experience. It's been fun and it's been uh, a rewarding experience so far. And I really haven't felt worried about how many viewers or followers I get. But uh, I've been really happy to see uh, how many people have discovered my channel in these last two streams now that I actually have my category set properly. So, uh, and the fact that the uh, that I was able to notice I didn't have my category set was thanks to a viewer comment. So it's been great to see uh, how people have helped me improve the channel uh, with their tips and suggestions. Well, Scrapper, I'm definitely going to uh, look up your channel and follow you. And thank you so much for joining me in the stream today. Uh, I'll be streaming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 p.m. West Coast time. And uh, if you want to see reminders of when I'm going to stream, follow my Instagram on Challenger Tabletop. So, or at Challenger Tabletop. So that's uh, the stream for today. Here's the finished mech gun. And let's see if we can show off the other finished one alongside it here. Here's my two finished mech guns. Each one is going to have a little crew of five grots in game. And uh, I've used one in game so far. I think actually in two games now with my orcs and they perform pretty well. Uh, they hit on fours with grots, which uh, is better than most orc uh, uh, aim. Very nice Daka indeed. Well, that's the stream. I hope you have a great night. It's got to be 2022 there. How is it, Scrapper? Uh, uh, not the end of the world yet, I hope. Not another uh, Y2K in uh, 2022, if you remember that. I'm old enough too, for sure. But uh, you have a great night. I'm going to go get ready for my overnight shift. I've got two hours till that starts, so I can relax a bit. Maybe I'll make another cup of coffee. Uh, but you have a great night and hope to see you again soon.